Welcome to our special segment on bronchoscopy suction performance. Today, we are joined by Michael, the observer of a fascinating study evaluating the suction capabilities of single-use flexible bronchoscopes. Michael, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to share the findings. Let's jump right in. So, tell me, what was the primary objective of this study? So this study was conducted by Dr. Reddy and his team and published during the American Thoracic Society Congress of 2024. The primary goal was to systematically evaluate the suction capabilities of commercially available single-use flexible bronchoscopes across different fluid viscosities. The aim was to replicate the real-world conditions seen in intensive care units, particularly during the therapeutic aspiration of secretions. This allowed for a comparison of the efficacy of different bronchoscopes under a variety of challenging scenarios. Okay, this appears to be highly pertinent to clinical applications. How did they prepare the testing environment, specifically the pseudomucus used in the study? The pseudomucus was created by mixing gar gum with water, and then the viscosities were adjusted using a viscometer to ensure accuracy. The team tested a range of viscosities from 10 centipuis to 1,000 centipuis to simulate different types of secretions that might be encountered during bronchoscopy. Hey, and how was the performance of the bronchoscopes measured? The authors developed a custom smart scale system to measure the mass of the pseudomucus suction by each bronchoscope in 30 seconds. The system was sensitive enough to detect even small changes starting the measurement once a mass drop of two grams was detected. Wow, that's impressive. Biosuction pressures were tested as well. Could you elaborate on that? Yes, they tested at three different suction pressures, negative 100, negative 200, and negative 360 millimeters of mercury. These levels reflect the typical suction pressures found in hospital settings, with negative 100 representing the lower end of wall suction, and negative 360 being the maximum that is generally considered as clinically acceptable. The middle level was chosen as a common setting in many clinical situations. They used a manometer to verify the accuracy of the suction pressures before each test. Okay. And um, the study also highlighted the performance differences between regular and slim bronchoscopes. What were some of the key findings? So among the regular single-use flexible bronchoscopes, TSC Life's Broncoflex 5.6 2.8, also called Vortex, and Boston Scientific's Exalt B Regular were the top performers, particularly in high viscosity scenarios. Mm -hmm. However, TSC Life's Broncoflex 3.9 1.4, also called Agile, stood out among slim models, consistently outperforming others at all viscosities and pressures. Okay. How do these findings impact clinical practice? The study underscores the importance of balancing bronchoscope size and suction power, especially in critical care. While larger bronchoscopes may offer more powerful suction, they can also increase the risk for complications such as auto peep, positive and expiratory pressure, and barotrauma, particularly when used in smaller endotracheal tubes. This highlights the need for clinicians to consider both suction efficacy and patient safety, particularly in scenarios where the airway is already compromised. Mm, I see. I understand this study aligns with findings from a study by Kelebeyev and colleagues. How do their results support this study? The Kelebeyev study focused on how the size of bronchoscopes and the endotracheal tubes impacts airway pressures, especially in patients with compromised lung function, like those with ARDS acute respiratory distress syndrome. Their study showed that using larger bronchoscopes and smaller endotracheal tubes significantly increased airway pressures, such as peak and plateau pressures, which can raise the risk of barotrauma. This finding supports the study's conclusion that while larger bronchoscopes are more effective at suctioning, they also carry a higher risk of complications, particularly in patients with poor lung compliance. Both studies emphasize the importance of selecting the appropriate bronchoscope size based on clinical situation to minimize risks while ensuring effective suction. Okay. The Kelebeyev study was conducted by ENT doctors. Can you tell me why is their involvement significant? 
So ENT specialists are crucial in managing airway procedures and addressing complications from intubation and bronchoscopy. Laryngeal injuries such as vocal cord damage, stenosis, and barotrauma can occur during prolonged intubation, and ENT doctors often manage these issues. Their involvement in the Kelebiev study reflects their expertise in balancing effective bronchoscopy with minimizing harm to the airway, particularly in patients with conditions like ARDS, where lung compliance is already compromised. By understanding the effects of different bronchoscope sizes on airway pressures, ENT doctors can make informed decisions to reduce long-term damage. Okay. And um, given the findings, what do you foresee as the next steps for research and clinical guidelines? The study suggests a need for more detailed guidelines that consider the balance between suction power and safety, particularly in patients with conditions like ARDS. Future research could explore optimal bronchoscope and endotracheal tube combinations, refining the approach to manage complex airway cases. Finding the optimal ratio between outer diameter and inner diameter of the bronchoscope, like TSC Life managed for Bronchoflex 5.6 2.8, could be one of these solutions. This allows physicians to benefit from ideal suction performance, as demonstrated by Dr. Reddy's findings, without compromising the patient's ventilation by obstructing the airway with a large bronchoscope. Michael, this research provides valuable insight that could shape future clinical practices. Thank you for sharing this work with us. Thank you for the opportunity to discuss this study. I hope the findings will contribute to a safer and more effective care in clinical settings. That's for sure. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in. We'll see you next time.